Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Ruben and today we are going to talk about the big ideas from Organvest from 2021 and this episode will be about part 13, long read sequencing. Long read sequencing could provide a more complete picture of the human genome. Next generation DNA sequencing, also known as NGS, is the driving force behind the genomic revolution. Though historically dominated by short read sequencing, Arc believes that the long read sequencing will gain share at a rapid rate. And Arc believes that the long read technology offers superior accuracy, more comprehensive variant detection, and a richer set of features than short read platforms. And by the end of 2025, highly accurate long and short read sequencing should approach cost parity. And Arc believes that the long read revenues will grow 82% at an annual rate from 250 US dollars in 2020 to roughly 5 billion in 2025. So what does sequencing actually mean? Sequencing is a process for analyzing a sample of DNA taken from your blood. In the lab, technicians extract DNA and prepare it for sequencing. Within every normal cell are 23 pairs of chromosomes. Chromosomes are structures that house DNA. DNA is coiled into a shape called the double helix. The double helix can be unwound into a ladder shape. The ladder is made up of paired chemical letters called bases. Altogether, our DNA contains about 6 billion such paired chemical bases. There are four bases in the DNA alphabet, A, T, C, and G. In DNA, base A joins only with base T, and base G joins only with base C. To read the sequence of bases in DNA, samples are inserted into a sequencing instrument, where high-frequency sound waves break the DNA into smaller pieces that are only about 600 bases long. Special tags are added to the ends of the fragmented DNA. These tagged strands of DNA can then attach to a glass slide. In a sequencer, each piece of DNA is copied hundreds of thousands of times, which creates clusters of identical DNA fragments. Next, the sequencer reads the DNA, one base at a time, using different colored tags for each DNA base. Special sensors within the machine detect the different colored tags. This sequence of colors reveals the DNA sequence of each fragment. Powerful computers piece together these individual DNA fragments and reveal the sequence of your DNA. Then, a team of medical experts uses specialized software to analyze and compare the DNA sequences to identify the handful of variants that may be important for your medical care. First generation sequencing, which was Sanger sequencing. So Sanger sequencing is a method of DNA sequencing based on the selective incorporation of chain terminating dideoxynucleotides by DNA polymerase during in vitro replication. Um, most notably, this was used during the Human Genome Project. With this, um, the process is relatively slow and expensive, um, and the read lengths were quite short. You're generally working with fragments that are between 500 to 1,000 base pairs, um, but it is an accurate sequencing technology. Next came second generation or next generation sequencing. So this again was a short read sequencing technology. Um, it worked through high throughput from the parallelization of sequencing reactions. Um, it did have generally short reads, so anywhere from 50 to 500 base pairs, um, but it was able to bring sequencing um, to a broader population because it allowed for much more fast and affordable sequencing. And then after that came third generation sequencing or what you may consider long read sequencing. So since this is long read sequencing, um, we're working with much longer read lengths, on average tens of kilobases of fragment. We're also sequencing native DNA with third generation sequencing, and we're looking at that in real time at a single molecule resolution. The Genomic Toolkit is expanding to provide a fuller, richer, and more accurate view into biology. Well, the first generation sequencing is Sanger sequencing. Then we move to the second generation of sequencing that is also known as short read sequencing, which stands for SRS. They mention several companies here such as Illumina, BGI Genomics, Thermo Fisher Scientific, and Genapsis. And between the second and the third generation, ARC puts three different kinds of areas here. The first one is single cell biology from Tanex Genomics. They are involved in sequencing. 
Berkeley Lights, they are involved in digital cell biology. Uh, second area is optical mapping from bio-nanogenomics and NAPSIS. And the third area is spatial biology uh, from Tanix Genomics and Nanostring. And they do spatial profiling and in situ imaging. And lastly, we have the third generation of sequencing, which is, according to ARC, the future. That is known as long read sequencing, also known as LRS. You can think about the company Pacific Biosciences of California. They focus on synthesis fluorescence and Oxford Nanopore, also known as ONT. Historically, researchers had to choose between accuracy with short read sequencing or comprehensiveness with long read sequencing. Well, both long read sequencing and short read sequencing systems A. They break the genome into smaller fragments. B. They analyze the fragments with higher resolution optics. And they put star hair, so this applies for Pacific Biosciences of California and Bionanogenomics. Because for Oxford, Nanopore Technologies calls the basis using fluctuations in electric slash current across a nanopore channel. And C. Reassemble the genome with efficient computer algorithms. Well, short read sequencing blends many small, so 150 base pair fragments called reads into a consensus sequence. This method captures small mutations, but does not detect larger shufflings called structural variants or mutations hidden in repetitive genomic regions. To give an example here, AA, AA. Older long read sequencing systems measured larger, so more than 10,000 base pair reads, and while less accurate on a per base level, it provided a more complete picture of the genome. And in the right, they put this in a graph with an example. So on the left, we have short read sequencing, the green color. The base accuracy is good, but the completeness is 50 50. And on the right, we have long read sequencing which means that the base accuracy is less, but is more complete because you're doing a long term, uh, a long read. As costs for long read sequencing converge with short read sequencing, many clinical applications could shift to long read sequencing. Catalyzed by deep learning algorithms such as Google's deep variant, both synthesis and nanopore based long read sequencing methods rapidly could improve in performance. Though less accurate on a per base level currently, nanopore based long read sequencing can generate whole genome sequences for $500, more cost effectively than short read sequencing. Though more expensive, according to the results obtained from the Precision FDA Truth Challenge V2, synthesis based long read sequencing is two and a half times more accurate than short read sequencing and 30 times more accurate than nanopore based long read sequencing. And on the right, they make a cost comparison, synthesis based long read sequencing and short read sequencing could near cost parity by 2025. So on the X axis, we have time and on the Y axis, we have the cost to sequence a human genome. With purple color is long read sequencing and the green color is short read sequencing and short read sequencing is currently cheaper. So for 2010, the cost uh, to sequence a whole genome for short read sequencing is $10,000. Long read sequencing is $180,000. And if you fast forward to 2025, we are approaching cost parity with a cost of approximately $100 per genome. Simon Barnett from Morganfast will give you an update on next generation sequencing. So NGS is the bedrock of the genomic revolution. In 2003, we sequenced the entirety of the human genome for the very first time. The idea was that we would be able to use that information to identify patients, detect disease earlier, and match patients to precision therapies. At the end of 2003 in the Human Genome Project, it cost roughly $3 billion to sequence all of the human genome and took around a decade of computation. Flash forward to today, that same sequence costs as little as $600 and only takes hours to assemble. Because of the cost declines, there's been a surge in volume, the amount of sequencing that we do, and the number of clinical areas that are beginning to come online. So we estimate that in 2019, there were about 2.6 million whole human genomes worth of data sequenced. And we imagine that with continued cost declines, 
and as sequencing bins begins to approach a $100 price point, we may end up seeing more than 50 to 60 million human genomes worth of data produced every year. According to Wright's law, for every cumulative doubling in data produced on its install base, the cost of synthesis-based long-read sequencing has declined and will continue to decline by 28%. While driven primarily by improvements in cost and throughput, long-read sequences' unique capabilities should galvanize broader adoption. So long-read sequencing A does not require amplification, B will detect methylation natively and C will span full RNA molecules. And according to Arc's estimate, the cost to sequence a whole genome with long read technology will drop to 100 to 200 US dollars. It's accuracy superior to short read sequencing across all variant types by the end of 2025. And in the right, they put this in a graph as well. It's called the synthesis based long read sequencing market, also known as SMRT follows Wright's law. And on the x-axis we have cumulative human genome equivalence sequence and on the y-axis we have realized cost slash genome across synthesis based long read sequencing. The install base in US dollars. By 2023 it is estimated that the cost will be lower than $1000 and that the cumulative human genome equivalence sequence will approach 1 million. Arc believes that long read sequencing analytics are superior for many sequencing applications. Some clinical applications such as rapid whole genome sequencing, also known as WGS, within the pediatric intensive care setting have high reimbursement rates, giving diagnostic providers more flexibility to switch to long read sequencing. Genetic variants of all sizes, from small to large, both in easy and hard to sequence genomic regions, can impact a patient's phenotype. And in Arc's view, long read sequencing tools provide the most comprehensive variant detection, regardless of sequence context. And he gave four areas here. The first one is pediatric cancers, because they have unique molecular drivers, such as hidden single nucleotide variants, also known as SNVs, gene fusions, structural variants, and methylation, all more amenable to long read sequencing and optical mapping instruments. The second one is about rare diseases, which affect 350 million people globally, are genetic in origin. Short read whole genome sequencing surfaces less than 50% of the causes, forcing many patients into a diagnostic odyssey. The third one is hereditary diseases, especially those neurological in origin because they have ambiguous clinical presentations which long read sequencing can diagnose. And the fourth case is about studying structural variations in a population and across diverse groups is vital to increasing the accuracy of molecular diagnostics. And lastly, sizing the opportunity. Arc believes that the demand for long read sequencing is reaching an inflection point, driven by lower sequencing costs and the need for highly accurate and complete results. And including sequencing consumables, instruments and services, long read revenues could expand from 250 million to 5 billion by 2025. But short read sequencing will continue to dominate the sequencing market, especially as liquid biopsy becomes a standard of care in oncology. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you actually learned something and see you on the next part.